Hello students, today we are doing chapter 6 from the science and technology textbook for standard 9, classification of plants. This is also the first lesson from science 2. So come along then, let's read and understand it. This is part 2. For a complete lesson, do watch part 1 and 2. You'll get the link in the description box below. Now let us study about phenerograms. Now plants which have special structures for reproduction and produce seeds are called phenerograms. Now we had already seen that cryptograms do not have the well developed uh, reproductive organs. That is they are hidden. But in this we see that they have a well developed reproductive system. Now in these plants after the process of reproduction, seeds are formed which contain the embryo and stored food. Now, during germination of the seed, the stored food is used for the initial growth of the embryo. So, when the plant starts growing, so the initial growth uh, for that, the stored food is used. Now, depending upon whether the seeds are enclosed in the fruit, that is, they are inside the fruit or not, phenerograms are classified into gymnosperms and angiosperms. Now, let's study both of them in detail. Now, division 1 is gymnosperms. Now, let's observe. Observe all garden plants like cicas, Christmas tree, hibiscus, lily, etc. and compare them. So, note the similarities and differences among them. So, what are the things that are similar? What are the things that are different? Now, which differences did you notice between gymnosperms and angiosperms? Now, gymnosperms are mostly evergreen, perennial and woody. Their stems are without branches and the leaves form a crown. These plants bear male and female flowers on different sporophiles of the same plant. Seeds of these plants do not have natural coverings, that is, these plants do not form fruits and are therefore called gymnosperms. Now, gymnos means naked and sperms means seeds. So, they do not have a covering, so therefore they are called no, so gymnosperms. Now, look at the examples given here. We have the cicas and this is another plant that is there right on top of it. This is how we will find the, uh, the seed. So, examples are cicads, piscia, that is the Christmas tree, then tuja, that is the morpanki, then we have the pinus, that is the deodor, etc. under this example. Now, let us learn about angiosperms. Now, for this, just do this activity. Soak the seeds of corn, beans, groundnut, tamarind, mango, wheat, etc. in water for 8 to 10 hours. After they are soaked, check each seed to say whether it divides into two equal halves or not and categorize them accordingly. So, if you can break them into two equal halves, that is, they are called dicotyledonous, that is, two parts. And if they do not, then they are called monocotyledonous. Okay? And in this, we find that the flowers of these plants bear the flowers that they bear are their reproductive organs. So, flowers are the reproductive organs. That is, flowers develop into fruits and the seeds are formed within the fruits. Thus, these seeds are covered. Okay. So, we will find that they, the seeds are enclosed inside the fruit. Unlike uh, the gymnosperms that we had learnt. In gymnosperms, the seeds are open. But here, the seeds are enclosed inside the fruit and hence, they are called angiosperms. Now, angios means cover and sperms means seeds. So, the plants whose seeds can be divided into two equal halves or dicotyledons are called dicotyledonous plants. So, all the plants that bear seeds which can be divided into two parts is called dicotyledonous plants and those whose seeds cannot be divided into equal parts are called monocotyledonous plants. That is, they have just one part to the seed. You cannot divide it into two parts. Let's learn about dicotyledonous plants and monocotyledonous plants. 
First, let's look at the seed. In dicotyledonous, we find that the seeds have two cotyledons. That is, the seeds can be divided into two parts. And in monocotyledonous, the seeds have single cotyledon. That is, they have just one part to it. The bean seed is a dicotyledonous seed. That is, we can see that it has two parts. Whereas, a corn seed is a monocotyledonous seed. That is, it has just one single part to it. Now, roots are well developed and they are primary roots, that is the taproot system. Whereas here we have the fibrous root system. This is the taproot system wherein we have the primary root and then we have the sub roots coming out from the primary root. For example, in hibiscus and banana, banyan. And we have the fibrous root system, for example, in onion and grass. The stem is strong, hard. For example, the banyan tree. Here you will find that the stem could be hollow. For example, in bamboo. It could be false. For example, in a banana plant. Or disc-like in the uh, onion. Now, leaf. The leaves have reticulate venation and parallel venation. In the first leaf, we see the reticulate venation. That is, there is the main part to the stem, the leaf, and then it gets divided and there is a network of uh, these veins in the leaf. Whereas, in parallel venation, we see that the veins go parallel to each other. The flowers, the flowers with four or five parts or in their multiples, that is, tetramerous or pentamerous and here we find that the flowers with three parts or in multiples of three that is trimerous. So, this is how we saw the difference between the dicotyledonous plants and the modern monocotyledonous plants. I hope you all enjoyed this lesson children. For the answers to the textual exercises and free worksheet, go to www.jkacademypro.com. You will get the link in the description box below. Thank you. Bye-bye.